Hi, my name is Noah. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to using Monterey Peninsula College online. I'll show you how to log on for the very first time, I'll get you started with editing your course pages, and I'll talk to you a little bit about what MPC Online is. So, MPC Online is a course management system that runs off a free application called Moodle. What MPC Online provides for teachers and students is, admittedly, already available in bits and parts all over the web. For instance, there's many online gradebook services available out on the web that you can sign up for yourself, as well as quiz makers and document sharing services and discussion boards and wikis and email clients and you name it. But the selling point of MPC Online is the integration of all those sorts of utilities that teachers use into one web location. So in this case, mpconline.mpc.edu. And it's a web location that's physically stored on a campus instead of a private server somewhere, and that distinguishes between students and non-students. MPC Online also already comes ready to use for your classes. Your students already have accounts, whether they know it or not, and they're automatically enrolled into those courses. Those courses just don't have any content yet. So let's get started. Here I am at the MPC Online homepage, and you can see I'm not logged in. And the homepage is accessible anywhere you have internet access in a browser. So this is what you'll see when you go to mpconline.mpc.edu. And when you scroll down, you'll see student resources, which has uh, resolutions to common problems for students, and faculty resources, which contains a lot of uh, content for editing your course pages. There's a lot of useful information here. Under online help, there's also a step-by-step -step walkthrough through logging in for the very first time. So I'll even be using that step-by-step -step in this guide. So when we log in, we'll go to the top right corner and hit the login button. And your usernames are going to be your first initial plus your last name. For students, it'll be the first initial plus your full last name plus the last four digits of your student ID. The default password is change me. And because that's a very public password and not very secure, what the system will do is the first time that you log in, you'll be prompted to change that password to something more personal and more secure. And so this is the screen that you'll see after you've changed, uh, after you've logged in for the very first time. It'll then take you to your profile page where you should put in an email address where you can be contacted in case you need to have that password reset in case you forget it or lose access to your account. So because I've already done that, I'm just going to log in normally. And when you log in normally, it'll take you to the home page. In the top right, we can see that I'm now logged in. And if you click on your name, it'll take you to your profile. Or at the bottom, you can change your password. Or if you click Edit Profile, you can go back and customize all the information involving your profile, including a description of yourself and a picture of yourself and contact information that others can see. Now that I'm logged in, up in the top left-hand corner, we can see the courses that I am, if I'm a student, if I'm enrolled in, and if I'm a teacher that I'm teaching. When you open up your course, this is what you'll see by default. There'll be no content in it, and none of the blocks on the left or right-hand side will be configured. So to get started with, with uh, customizing this course, under the Administration tab, we should always start with the Settings tab. And these, the settings tab involves just general settings related to your course, not specific content. So you can have a description of your course. You can say when your course is going to start, whether you want it to move forward in a weekly or a, under a topics format or a social format. So some teachers prefer to move from subject to subject. Some prefer to move from week to week and a number of other settings. So one thing you'll notice as you go through MPC Online is oftentimes you'll be at course pages and you won't necessarily understand the significance of a setting. And if you're ever confused about what a setting does and you aren't sure whether or not you should change it or not, just click on the question mark that's actually the setting and that'll give you a description of what that particular setting does. And you can decide for yourself if it's something that you might want to tweak. So I'm back, at the, I'm back at the course page, and I'm going to start adding content. So back under the Administration tab, I'll turn Editing on, 
and that will reveal a whole bunch of new functions for me to do with my course page. Each block, each week block, has two drop down menus, and using these drop down menus, I can either add resources, which include things like text pages or PD, or I can choose to link to files such as PDFs or documents or um, or anything I want to upload, movie files, audio files. I can link to websites, I can insert excerpts from books or make labels. Or if I want to add something that's more interactive, I can add an activity. So if you want students to upload a file to your course, you would add that sort of the upload a single file activity. Or if you want students to participate in a discussion of some sort, you'd add a forum. I'm going to give this second week here a summary. save those changes and also create an item real quick so I'll say that let's say I'll link to a website I'll give that link a name and I'll point that text at a particular web page. I'll save and return to the course. And we can see that that link I created now shows up. And if I click on it, it will open and it will open where I pointed it at. I'll add one other link as well. And so now we have two items under our second week. Next to the items that we've created, we can see that there's a set of options. And if you hover over these options, you get a text description saying what they do. And I'll just go through them one by one here. Uh, the crosshairs allow you to move items between weeks and, or blocks. The left and right hand arrows allow you to move those items within a block to the left or right. The hand with the pencil in it allows you to update all the settings for that item. The X allows you to delete it and the I allows you to show or hide it. And what showing or hiding an item does is it makes it visible or not visible to your students. And this is an important point to consider. So when you're editing your course all of the content that you create may not necessarily be visible to your students. And it's important to make sure that uh, only the, the, that, that what your students are seeing is what you intend them to see. And one way to make sure that what they're seeing is what you intend them to see is to use the switch role to drop down box in the top right hand corner. Click that and select student. And if a student was to go to your page, this is what they'd see right now. They wouldn't see those two links that we created. And that's because I closed that eye and they were hidden. So now I opened it and I go back to student and you can see that students can now see this. You can choose to hide individual items or you can choose to hide whole weeks as well. So if you hide that whole week and see what students see, it will just say that that whole week is not available. I'll show you how to do one other thing now, which is how to uh, customize these blocks on the left and right hand side of your course page. So if you go to the right hand side and scroll all the way down, you can choose to add a block from the drop down menu. So I'll choose to add a calendar. The page will refresh. I'll scroll down and there's my calendar. If I hover over the name of the calendar, I get those crosshairs so I can move it around. And if I want to hide it from people, uh, students specifically, um, I can choose to hide or close the eyeball. And if I want to delete it, I can use the X to delete that item. So that's just a quick introduction to getting started with editing your course pages. As a quick recap, remember to switch back and forth between student roles and teacher roles to make sure your students are seeing what, they, what you intend them to see. 
if you're ever confused about a setting when you're creating an item, you can click on the question mark to get a one or two paragraph description of what that particular item does. And if you want additional help with creating course content on the MPC College Online homepage under Faculty Resources, we've provided a number of links and videos to uh, creating course content and troubleshooting any problems you might run into with MPC Online. If you ever need technical support, on the right hand side of the home page, just click that link to contact technical support or send an email to onlinehelp at mpc.edu. Thank you for watching.